Welcome to our ECU Flash Training Part 9. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our Speed Density Tefra V7 style ROMs. We're going to jump into our three-dimensional volumetric efficiency table and learn how to dial it in in both closed and open loop tuning methods. We're then going to move into our EvoScan software, learn how to patch custom coatings that we can add channels in to log things such as our map sensor or our speed density volumetric efficiency value from our table. We're then going to move into our Megalog Viewer software, creating custom math channels so we can overlay and plot our closed and open loop data into custom histograms so we can see exactly what we need to make editing changes in our three-dimensional volumetric efficiency table. We're going to have a lot of things to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at our 3D volumetric efficiency speed density based Tefra V7 ROM files in this video. So this is going to allow us to ignore the mass airflow sensor. We can actually completely remove it. We'll be replacing the mass airflow sensor with a separate intake air temp sensor because the intake air temp sensor is in the mass airflow housing. We're also going to be replacing our factory map sensor, which is a one bar with either a three bar or four bar or other options that we have on the aftermarket. Now, these ROMs have been pre-patched and set up for an Omni 4 bar. So I highly suggest, if you're gonna be doing your tuning here in your speed density operation, that you just purchase the Omni 4 bar. It's gonna make your life much, much easier. You're not gonna to have to worry about going through a lot of the background details here. Now I'm gonna go through how to scale the map sensor um, in some of our programming here, but again, it's gonna make things much easier. This is essentially gonna be a plug and play map setup for an Omni 4 bar. Um, before we get into looking at any of the tables here, whether we're going to be talking about our EVO 8 or EVO 9 examples, these are going to be virtually identical the way we're going to program them. Um, there's some things that we need to get out of the way first. So first and foremost, before we can do any tuning in our speed density operation, we have to make sure we have a wideband wired in and configured so that our EVO scan is able to log that. Now there's some options for this. The easiest option and the one I'm going to be covering here is going to be utilizing a serial stream output from your wideband that you're using. So in the mass airflow specific video, I covered this. I'm just going to reiterate this in case you skip the mass airflow specific tuning video and you're jumping right into our speed density video. So I typically work with AEM widebands um, and I find that they're very inexpensive. They work very well and they have a decent sensor life as far as the wideband and, and functionality. And you'll find that a lot of EVOs already have the AEM widebands in them. So on any AEM wideband, you're going to find that they have this serial stream output that's going to be allowing you to send that input into your laptop directly. So we don't have to worry about going into the car and wiring the white wire, which is our 0 to 5 volt signal that would send a wideband sensor reading out to your ECU. We're able to accomplish that, but I don't like to do that. I like to use the serial stream output. So in order to use the serial stream output, if we're talking about an older style gauge, a 30-4100 or a part number 30-4110 from AEM, coming up on the screen, we'll see our schematic. We have a couple wires that we need to wire in when we're installing our wideband gauge. So we're gonna have a red wire, that's our power, black wire, that's our chassis ground. We'll have that white wire, which will be unused in this situation. Then we have our blue wire. The blue wire is our serial stream output. Now that wire is going to get tied into a DB9 connector. So this is going to be a serial port style connector. It's going to be a male style connector. So if you have a spare serial port connector laying around um, on a cable, you'll be able to cut it. And you're going to be running the blue wire into the pin number two on your male serial port RS232 connector, however you're going to be calling the designation for the connector type. Um, the blue wire goes to pin number two. Then the black wire or uh, a ground wire, I should say, is going to be going to pin number five. Um, doesn't matter what color you make that wire, but that's going to go to chassis ground. So pin number five, this will go to chassis ground. Pin number two gets tied into the blue wire. That's going to allow you to take a USB to serial converter, plug it into your laptop, and be able to serial stream the wideband reading right into EvoScan. This is going to be super important for logging our actual air fuel because our front O2 sensor is a narrowband style sensor. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.